Hey, this is Mrs. Murphy, and today we're going to learn about different operating systems. We're going to discuss different types and some of the things the operating system takes care of. Uh, we're also going to show you how to use a text-based operating system, such as Terminal or DOS or something. Well, from a user's standpoint, the operating system is what we see when we use a computer. It lets us navigate to our program or app that we want to use. But an operating system is actually more than that. It's the main program that manages all the hardware, all the software. It controls the processes, controls memory, controls all of your devices in, on your computer. It's kind of like a big control system. It allows the p com a person to use the computer, and it provides the interface between us and all the applications and software. It also allows other programs to access the hardware. Like, suppose you want to print a picture from the internet, your web browser would need to navigate, uh, would need to interact with the printer. Now, to make all of these devices work together, the operating system uses what's called drivers, or these are special interface programs that allow you to uh, allow communication of the data between the devices and the application. The drivers allow the computer to recognize the device, whether it's on a PC or whether it's on a Mac, or you, but the operating system will still recognize that CD burner, or that webcam, or whatever it is you're trying to, to use. So there's three major operating systems. You've got Windows, you've got Linux, and you've got Mac. But any other type of computer would also have an operating system. Take, for example, my dishwasher. Uh, well, there's a computer in there. There's got to be. There's one of those fancy ones where you can do delay and stuff like that. Well, it needs to have something that will take care of the various cycles through the different stages of the washing. Here's the washing, here's the rinsing, here's the, the heating, whatever it is. You're also able to choose different types of washing. You know, I've got a short wash or a pots and pans wash. I can even do a delay for several hours. Why you'd want to use a delay on a dishwasher, I have no idea, but it's there. So, therefore, my dishwasher has to have some type of operating system. It's not going to be Windows or Linux or Mac, but there is something that is operating the, the system. Now, the operating system is just a computer program. Although it's an essential program, it's uh, Windows and Macs and Linux, they're all a little bit different, but the operating system still works in the same way. There's two parts of the operating system. The core of the operating system is called kind of a kernel. Uh, and then there's any other and your supporting applications that you might have from your operating system. So when you first push the power button on your computer, what that does is well, obviously it sends power to the components of the computer. And then uh, it sends power to your BIOS. And then all of a sudden there's instructions there on the BIOS chip. There's a little BIOS chip on your main board. And there's instructions there that the processor starts running. Um, the first thing it's going to do is do a post. It's a power on self test. And uh, if you're using a Windows machine, this is what the post screen looks like. And all that's doing is checking all the hardware devices, seeing if they're there. You've got primary there for the primary uh, hard drive, and there's different other th things that it's looking for. And um, once it's finished that post process, it loads the kernel, and the kernel takes over from there. The main function of your operating system is to provide that uni user interface, but it also manages programs, resources, provides security for your computer. Now, there are several types of user interfaces for your operating system. It started out years ago with just a command line operating system, and they were only able to execute a single process at a time. DOS was kind of a good example of a single tasking operating system. It was text-based, and uh, you'd write one line of code, and it would execute that one line, and then you'd do the next, and it would occupy. Uh, if you wanted to do something else, you'd have to close out whatever you were doing and open up the next thing. Well, nowadays, operating systems can handle more than one program at a time. I don't know about you, but at any given moment, I have three applications running with at least seven tabs open in Chrome. But if you remember back to that computer architect chapter, a processor can only make one true or false decision at a time. So really, even though we are multitasking, the computer processor is not. 
it's using some time slicing to appear that it's sharing the processor. It's really just sharing it in fixed time units. And since it's sharing super fast, it appears to us slow humans that it is multitasking. One of the tasks of the operating system is to manage processes or whatever programs are yet running. If you're on a Windows machine, you can do a control alt delete type those three keys at the same time and click on the show task manager and you can see all of the processes running on your computer. You'll see all the programs you have open, but you'll also see other processors that were run by the operating system. Any item connected to the main board on your computer needs to be managed by the operating system. Some of these devices need drivers to tell the operating system how to use them, but some of them are detected automatically by the operating system. Well, if they're one of those ones that are detected automatically, it's called plug and play. If you plug in your USB drive, you don't have to install a driver, it just automatically detects it. That's a plug and play technology. Another task of the operating system is to help secure the files and programs that are on your computer. Thus, we have the Windows login screen. Uh, so I have several users on my computer. I don't want my kids accidentally deleting all my files. So uh, the operating system just provides a little, a little bit of security by protecting some of your files and programs. Now, it's nice to learn some of the command line operating system as well. Uh, if you ever try and write a computer program that works with the operating system, you'd use these command line commands in the code uh, for your application to interact with the operating system. It's so much easier than saying, okay, I need the mouse to move to this position and open this file. No, you're just going to use an open command. Well, if you have a Windows machine, you're going to be using DOS commands in a command prompt. The commands are not case sensitive, and all you have to do is search for the command prompt by typing CMD into a search. If you're using Mac or Linux, you're going to be using bash commands in terminal. Uh, this is case sensitive. And to locate terminal on your Mac, just type in terminal into your search bar and it should be the first thing that comes up. First command we're going to show you is to show you how to list all of the files and folders in the current directory that you're in. In Windows, you're going to use a dir command. It's short for directory. Uh, in Linux or in Mac, you're going to type in ls, which stands for list. Uh, they both do the same thing. It just lists the files and folders. And you can tell which are folders from the files by the dot. All of the files have a dot something something after them. Dot txt for dec text files. Dot docx for Microsoft Word documents. Folders are not going to have that dot after them. The more command is not listed in your book. But it's the same command for both systems. All it does is shows you the contents of a text file. You simply type in more and then the file name you wish to view. Uh, the file has to be in the current directory you are. So you have to be able to see it when you do an ls or dir command. But all that will do is it will show the contents of the, f of the text file in the command prompt. And sometimes it's not going to show all of the file, like it's a long file, it's not going to show everything at once. And if you want to get down to the bottom, just hit enter a couple of times and it'll take you through to the rest of the file. The change directory command is also the same in both systems. You use this command to navigate down into a folder. You simply type in cd or change directory and then you put the folder that you want to open. The folder you want to open has to be located in your current directory, though, uh, so you should be able to view that folder name when you type in ls or dir. Now you can go down one folder, like in the first example, it says cd my folder, that just goes into that directory. Um, or in the second example, it's going down several folders if you already know those names. You could type in cd my folder or forward slash homework, and that will get you down into that particular directory. If you want to go up a directory, you simply type in cd and then dot dot, and that will go up one directory. Now the make dir command will create a new directory. You just type in make dir and then the folder name you wish to create. The copy command is used to make a duplicate of a file or folder. You code copy and then the source name and then the destination. When you use the copy command, you can use the same file name, just like in the first example, it's copy, 
uh, and then it's myfile.txt and it's copying it into myfile.txt. Uh, but you could also change the name when you copy it. In this, like in the second example, you could say copy myfile.txt and then it's saving it to your file.txt. Another thing you can do is you can specify you need to specify the path. In the first example, it's copying from a file above the current directory into the current directory. Versus the second example is copying it from the current directory into a folder even deeper. And you can have any combination. You could say copy my file.txt and you have, can have it copy up a directory. It's just wherever you want it to go, depending on your relative position in the, in the command prompt. To delete or remove a file, it's different in Mac or Linux and Windows. Uh, but both accomplish the same thing. You use the del or delete command in Windows to delete a file or folder, but you use the rm command in Mac or Linux to remove a file or folder. Really, they both just do the same thing. They get rid of that file or folder. Well, that's it for today. You should have enough information to do the homework. I tried to do a little activity for making for practicing these commands, and I tried to make it a little bit more interesting. So I created a little command line treasure hunt. All you're going to do is navigate to the text files using DOS or Terminal to practice the commands we discussed today, and then you just go in and answer the questions.